And welcome back to Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped for the PlayStation 4. Alright my friends, let's go ahead and jump straight into level 19, Future Frenzy. We're coming for you, Dr. Engine. Alright, nearly at the end of this game guys, we only have a couple more levels left and a fight with Cortex after this area. Looking forward to that. Now things start getting very interesting. I'm pretty sure Dr. Engine set all of this up. He's quite a, you know, a master with his, like, technology and stuff. He likes all of this. Right. Okay. Let's get our bearings straight. Try not to burn to death with the lasers and stuff. I remember you guys. You were similar to the enemies in uh, Crash Bandicoot 1. Looks like you've been revamped a little bit. Engine's up in his game, is he? Must be what's going on. One thing you will notice, we didn't actually fight uh, Nitrous Brio in this one, which is, uh, you know, interesting. Oh, wait a sec. <laughs> Scratch that idea. This level is so easy when you get the bazooka upgrade, because you can literally just target enemies up ahead without going down a conveyor belt and risking, you know, sudden burning death. You can just fire the enemies away up ahead and it just kind of saves you a little bit of time and difficulty. In my opinion, definitely one of the most up, you know, Broken upgrades, in my opinion. Chip boy. Just take it all slow. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't like you things. There were similar platforms like that in one of the previous Crash Bandicoot games as well, where you can't touch the side of their vehicle. I noticed that, actually. In a lot of the Crash Bandicoot games, a lot of the platforms eventually try and hurt you as well. Like, it wasn't enough. For the enemies to be there, the traps and everything like that. No, now the platforms are actually against you as well. It really sucks. Yeah, I'm not jumping on that. I plan to keep my feet. Ah, oh, except I just burnt them off. Maybe I should have tried a double jump there. I do have the double jump upgrade. Kind of been neglecting that a little bit actually. I mean, it's not the best upgrade in the world, but it's certainly not the worst. If you're going to fall off of a ledge, then try and jump again. You might actually survive, believe it or not. There was probably the timing for that. I'm playing it safe, though. I can't really afford to lose any more Aku Aku Muscles because I, I don't actually have any. There you go. Wow, there are so many boxes in this stage. 133 boxes. There has to be a death route or something. Oh, wait a second. Ah, oh. okay, actually I don't mind that. <laughs> basically what happens when you go on that spinny thing, uh, you're basically counted as spinning, which means obviously, you know, you go into a TNT, you're going to detonate it and die basically. Oh, no, 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 not playing around with that. I'll wait for him to come forward, I think. Okay, go. checkpoint. Please don't die before the checkpoint. There we go. <laughs> Alright. Oh no, I press crouch. I, f I swear I pressed crouch just then. Right, crouch. Oh my god. Alright, there's the crystal. <laughs> At least I have that. Okay, nitro boxes. There can't be that many nitro boxes though, so there's obviously a lot of boxes in this uh, entire stage. I'm trying to think what the hardest level in this game would actually be. Oh, damn it, seriously. I always seem to mess that up for some reason. Relying on the uh, the spin on that alone isn't always enough. Sometimes you actually have to give yourself a bit of a push as well. Okay, I'll try that again then. No, oh, oh my god. See how the upgrades just kind of help? Right, how am I going to do this? Ah, damn it, really? Again? What's wrong with me today? Okay. That was quite nice. <laughs> Still doesn't make up for this freaking failure, though. I need to get enough distance, otherwise I would do this myself, but I don't, I don't know. I don't like this. 
<laughs> oh my god. Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> Sometimes you have to do it your own way. You have to find ways of uh, completing levels. Alright, nitro box there. That That's good. Wasn't enough of the boxes though. There must be uh, like a secret route or something that I didn't take there. The main thing is I've got the power crystal and we can leave this area. That is not a very fun level in my opinion. Oh jeez, alright. It's all too familiar with some of the more technical levels in Crash 2 actually. There's a lot of levels that play like that. Okay. Two gems in that level, including the box one obviously. Right, that was level 19, wasn't it? Yeah, so let's go ahead and jump straight into level 20 now. This one is Tomb Raider. Did Jonathan Ross type that? Who knows? Anyway, <laughs> this is the last level before we fight Dr. Engine, which in my opinion is one of the hardest bosses in this game. And I'll explain why. Um, he has two health meters without you realizing at first. He has five pieces of health, which for a Crash Bandicoot game, that's a relatively decent amount of health. Well, well, as soon as you defeat the first five sections of his health, um, how best to put it, he gains another seven pieces of health, equaling a total of 12 uh, pieces of health. That's insane. That is so much health. That's a dick move, wow. <laughs> yeah, there's something really weird about this level. I'm actually going to back off here because... Um, as you can see, the water level in here rises, which by the way, that is incredibly annoying to try and do a relic run of this. Oh my god, get up! Oh my god! Because <laughs> obviously, as you can imagine, trying to speed through this level and avoid enemies and raising water levels and stuff, that's not, you know, that's not very nice. Oh, I need to get around you somehow, don't I? I'm going to jump over you, actually. <laughs> Screw that. Cool. Yeah, he has 12 pieces of health, guys. That's insane. I did it again, didn't I? I always seem to do that. I always seem to do that. Fair enough, game. That is so mean. <laughs> that is so out of order, man, I tell you. Alright, well, never mind. Okay, well, I'll just do this for the Wampa Fruits then, I guess. Holy crap. Alright, yeah, I see what I've got to do here. Wasn't really worth the risk, was it? Ugh. Wow. Maybe I could have made it without activating that uh, box there. <laughs> yeah, taking too many risks sometimes. But this is Crash Bandicoot. Risks end up happening against your uh, free will. Right, what is going to happen here with the... Okay, yep. Oh my god, that was extremely close. I actually felt myself sinking there. Right. For the record, um... If you fall under that door, that counts as a death as well because it will actually squash you. So you have to kind of uh, crank that wheel up a little bit better. Otherwise you're kind of just letting yourself in for some disappointment. Oh damn it, I knew I shouldn't be standing there. I don't like this, I really don't like this. I'm actually just going to avoid all of this if I can. Try and spin for delay. <laughs> don't actually need to worry about the boxes so I don't really know why I'm worrying about that. Might as well jump on that platform there though, rustle up alive and hopefully try and spin over all of this danger here. That, oh, I'll tell you what, that upgrade is so broken. That's a, that's a death route I think, I think that's a death route, yeah there is a death route in this level. That's insane. So that explains why there's 88 boxes, that kind of makes sense actually. You normally know that there's another route when uh, there's a high amount of boxes and there's that purple glow that I know and love. It's a good thing you can't spin away crystals. I don't think you can anyway. That would be kind of, uh, you know, kind of harsh on the player. Oh, he's going to get in my way. He's definitely going to try and get in my way. Oh my god, that was too freaking close. I'm having a lot of close calls today, in case you uh, haven't already guessed. Okay, another checkpoint. Getting quite a lot of checkpoints here, actually. I'm taking too many risks here. <laughs> I need to slow down. Okay, take a breather for just one minute, and then jump back into it again. 
I'm not really taking out any of the enemies either. It's not like I'm doing like an some kind of random challenge that I set myself with like a no enemy run. Ah, oh, screw you. What the hell? I'm not going to make that. No. <laughs> you just kind of know after a while. Right, I'll time it with it going down. That's the best way to do that, I find. As soon as the water level's going down, you move. That's when you have to make a move. Oh, no. Oh, my... See what I mean? See what I mean there? That's such a good delay tactic. You get too deep in that water, you're in trouble. You're in deep water. Literally. What am I doing? I'm taking far too many risks there. Okay. We're done. <laughs> I knew that that wasn't going to give me the crystal, but I don't care. I just thought it was fun. It's, I don't know, it feels nice to break the, uh, the nitro boxes with that metal container. There's something pleasurable about it, and I don't know what. Maybe it's hearing all of the boxes exploding around the level. It's kind of fun. <laughs> right, so, Dr. Engine. I guess it's me and you now. And we're not going to be fighting him uh, with Crash. We're actually going to be fighting him with Coco. So that's kind of cool that they actually allowed uh, Coco to have a boss fight. Because at first it kind of froze you, because all the other bosses you've played, you know, as Crash. So, this is going to be a bit different for us. And she likes her technology as well, so this would be good. So, you want to go a few rounds? When this is over, we'll see who is obsolete. Okay, yeah, we'll see who's more high-tech. Because Coco has some good tech that she's going to use to help us win this fight. She has a pretty nice space vehicle, as you can see, but so does he. Thankfully, um, I've played Star Fox Adventures, so I kind of feel a little bit more confident about this fight. Um, but yeah, we will see how this goes. Any fight in Crash Bandicoot can be extremely difficult at times. Alright, he's firing a cannon. That should be safe where that is. I'm going to focus on this one over here. Oh my god, my health meter. That was a lot of damage just then. That was a lot of damage. And for the record, we have to take all seven of his health bars down. If you don't take all of his uh, health bars down, forget it. If you get like if, if you get down to his last health bar on this run of five health bars, uh, that's not good enough really if you're too low on health because he has another seven more, like I said. It doesn't refresh the, uh, the health meter. <laughs> so you basically have to... Um, Oh crap. You basically have to get rid of 12 health bars at the same time. With the same health meter. It's really harsh on the player. Don't like that. I don't like that at all. It's not like I can even move the the, uh, the aimer either. This is only phase one. Come on, try and take that out before he fires it. There we go. Didn't think the uh, camera was going to let me go that far for a second. This fight is insane, in my opinion. Come on. There we go. Right, so that's five of his health bars down. He now has another seven. I remember, like, the first time I played this, I got really excited. Oh, that weren't too bad. All of a sudden, he takes off and thinking, that's not right. Then all of a sudden, we come down here, and we've got, like, a massive penis on our rocket now. This is great. This is, like, you know, this is crazy. So now, this fight gets even more intense. He now has more than one way of killing us. Which is not good. I think the way I handled this before was I just kind of like circled and targeted as much of these as I possibly could because uh, moving does make him harder to hit but if you stay still then you're gonna get hit so you kind of have to accept the uh, the poison that you're gonna get from this. Also that thing that's homing in on us I think if that hits you that could possibly be an instant death. Okay, I want to try and take out the plasma missile things at first, but I'm seeing what happens here. <laughs> I mean, as you can see, this is extremely annoying if you die now, because obviously you have to take down 12 of his health meters again. Nice, nice. That was a double kill there. That was really good. That was really good. I like that. There you go. He's now dead. Screw you, engine. Hell yeah. To fire fruit at the target, hold L2 button to raise a gun, aim with the directional buttons and press circle to fire. We now have the fruit bazooka. That, in my opinion, is the most broken upgrade in this entire game. So, in the next episode, guys, I'm going to be showing that off. 
and in the next episode we're going to be on the final area of this game. This playthrough has been extremely quick in my opinion. It's not been bad. It's funny how history repeats itself. Yet again, Engine has failed to defeat you. <laughs> For this we must destroy you! <coughs> oh, my aching head. I'm not feeling myself these days. So, the end is in sight. Gather another five crystals, and again you will have foiled my plan. Or will you? Okay, so it's only Cortex remaining now. We have finished this area, so we can leave Egypt now. And we can go ahead and enter this final barrier that's now free for us. And we have the last five levels of the game, guys. So level 21 in the next episode is going to be gone tomorrow. I'm not going to record this tomorrow. I'm going to record this today because I'm in the zone. Orange Assault. 23 is Flaming Passion. 24 is Mad Bombers, which is another flying level, as you can see. And level 25, the final level, is Bug Light. So, hopefully you guys are enjoying this playthrough, and I hope to see you guys in the next episode. Alright guys, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Take care.